Bloomberg has a report this week that Boeing is preparing to install additional computer software on the Max, known as synthetic airspeed. Apparently, Bloomberg was tipped off to this story by an anonymous source because Boeing declined to officially comment on whether it was adding synthetic sensors to the Max, except to say, we continue to make steady progress towards safely returning the airplane to service. Adding synthetic airspeed to the Max. That's next on Maximus. Before we talk about adding synthetic air to the max, first we need to go back a bit and fill in some of the blanks. In a video last year, I highlighted a story of how after the second fatal crash of the 737 MAX in March of 2019, the Seattle Times broke a story of how a Boeing engineer submitted a damning internal ethics complaint that in order to slash the budget, management had blocked crucial safety improvements during the MAX's development. The ethics charge filed by engineer Curtis Eubank, whose job involves studying past crashes and using that data to make new planes safer, describes how around 2014, his group proposed max safety upgrades to Boeing managers and senior executives. One of the proposed systems could have potentially prevented both crashes. Boeing managers twice rejected the engineer's suggestions of adding the new system to the MAX on the basis of cost potential pilot training impact. It was then raised a third time in a meeting with MAX chief project engineer Michael Thiel, who cited the same objections and then promptly killed the proposal. Synthetic airspeed was already installed on the 787 Dreamliner. The system would have detected the false angle of attack signal that initiated events in both MAX accidents. But installing it on the MAX would likely have meant 737 pilots needed extra training in flight simulators. Running thousands of pilots through simulator sessions would have delayed the jet's entry into service and added substantial cost for Boeing's airline customers, damaging the MAX's competitive edge against the rival Airbus A320neo at the time. So now that we're all caught up, let's get into how Boeing may finally be getting around to installing the synthetic air system on the MAX. According to Bloomberg, Boeing is preparing to add an additional level of safety to the MAX by adding the synthetic airspeed system that can provide data to add redundancy to its angle of attack sensors. The system calculates information from both angle of attack sensors as well as other data points, such as the aircraft's mass, speed, and lift to develop an algorithm for enhanced stall protection. All the compiled data is then run through a computer program and produces readings that mimic what costly additional sensors would provide. Since the FAA wasn't requiring this additional redundancy, it must have been the pressure from the EASA that forced Boeing into this decision to finally install synthetic air, a system they initially refused to add when developing the MAX. The addition of synthetic air would most likely reduce the risk of accidents such as those that grounded the MAX. The system has already proved its value on Boeing 787 and Airbus has also adopted similar software on its aircraft. The reason why we are looking at it is it does have the promise to enhance safety, this guy said. No way I can pronounce that name. And he should know. He is an aerospace engineer professor at the University of Minnesota who is researching such systems. At the same time, he cautions the technology involves serious challenges and it's most likely not something Boeing can just slap on the max in a few months. The algorithms are complicated and certifying them is a bear, he said. In August, the FAA said they've tentatively accepted Boeing's changes to the Max's flight control computers, hinting that the plane could be approved to fly again as early as this fall. The fixes also meet the standards of other nations, the FAA said. The synthetic flight software Boeing is planning to add to the plane is a direct result of demands by the European Aviation Safety Agency, which has repeatedly said it wants even more protections for the MAX. In a compromise, the EASA has agreed not to hold up the plane's recertification, 
But the agency, along with the FAA, is insisting that Boeing make future improvements, and more importantly, Boeing needs to show how the company plans to implement the fixes before a final approval is given, said a person familiar with the deliberations who wasn't permitted to talk about them publicly. Specifically, the EASA wants three angle of attack sensors, one more than the two that Boeing is proposing. While the EASA is citing Airbus as an example because they have three sensors on their aircraft, however, the majority of commercial aircraft only have two. Discussions on the issue are still underway at EASA and the agency can't comment, it said in a statement. Bloomberg points out that despite the differences in sensors, Airbus and Boeing models have nearly identical accident rates, which overall are at all-time lows. But both manufacturers have suffered incidents and accidents as a result of angle of attack failures. That fact doesn't seem to get mentioned enough, that Boeing and Airbus have nearly identical accident rates. So to be fair, much of the fear of the MAX is based more on media hype than fact. However, even with the fixes to the MAX, a single angle of attack sensor failure can trigger multiple confusing alarms in the cockpit. Adding a third such sensor could help mitigate that. However, Boeing insists that such an addition would be costly and time-consuming. Breakthroughs in recent decades have made it possible to produce accurate estimates of angle of attack without a new sensor. These systems can also replicate a plane's speed and other flight data. GPS positional data helps ensure accuracy so that computers can then allow data to be knit together using algorithms to show speed and how the plane is behaving, including angle of attack. Bloomberg references Peter LeMay, a consultant who worked on aircraft control systems for early Boeing models. LeMay cautioned that such systems remain notoriously complex. It's easy to talk about, but it's hard to do, he said. This is not a casual undertaking. It will probably take at least two years. Not only must engineers ensure that formulas they devise work in every scenario imaginable, but aviation software must be many times more reliable than in consumer products. While creating such systems can be difficult, their value has already been demonstrated. They've been used to help guide NASA spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere, and Airbus recently patented a design for such a system. In addition to the 787, Airbus uses at least some of the same technology on its A350. A 2015 incident on a Jetstar Airways 787 flying from Melbourne to Singapore illustrates its potential benefits. The jet's three external sensors used to compute airspeed all iced up simultaneously. Such failures have been a problem in aviation because the sensors are all subject to the same problem, ice. The glitches can lead to confusion in the cockpit and in rare instances they've triggered crashes, such as when an Air France Airbus A330 went down in the Atlantic Ocean in 2009, killing all 228 aboard. In the Jetstar Airways case, however, the plane's synthetic system, which is immune from ice, recognized that the three sensors had failed and helped trigger alarms to the crew, investigators said. While I'm glad to hear that Boeing may be finally adding the synthetic airspeed to the MAX, I only wish they had done it from the very beginning. Okay, and now for some channel news. On September 6th, Maximus Aviation turns one year old. That went by fast. There are so many directions I want to go with the channel, but the fact that we blew up so fast, which is a good thing, don't get me wrong, but I've been so busy creating content that I haven't had time to work on the other things that I want to do. So I wanted to let you know that I'm working on ways that we can connect more as the Family Maximus. I'm building a website that won't just be about the channel, but I hope to feature a lot of aviation news and links to related stories. I also want to get into the Super Chats and do some live streams as well, especially for special occasions like new aircraft or rocket launches. Putting together a merchandise store with some really nice merch people will actually want to buy, I think. And then I'm looking at putting together a Patreon channel for people who like to see their names up in lights and want to help produce the channel. And finally, I'm considering doing a podcast of some kind, but I'm still working out the details exactly to how I want that to go. Anyway, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know I appreciate all of you, and I'm working on ways to grow the channel with all of you in mind. Maybe you have some ideas of your own. I'd be glad to hear them. Let me know down below. Well, that's all I have for now. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And of course, remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you 
next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus. <laughs>